So the, the theme of uh, the conference of the sector network for rural development is towards implementing the Agenda 2030. We we'll focus on the role of food security, youth employment and climate action. And I am supposed to talk on the African perspectives regarding these three issues. I would like to start by saying that Africa was the only region which designed a common position in the negotiations leading to Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals. And that common position was based on the development of cap productive capacities in order to boost industrialization. As you know, the levels of industrialization in the continent are quite low, except maybe in South Africa, Nigeria somehow, Kenya, Egypt, and Algeria. But the foundation of that common position was that in order for Africa to create sufficient jobs for the youth, Africa needed to industrialize. Now, the way African countries look at industrialization within Agenda 2063, which is the long-term strategy that they have, is to construct industrialization on the basis of agricultural transformation. If agricultural transformation does not take place, it will be difficult to lay the basis and the foundations for industrialization. Now, most of the population that we have are still in rural areas. And even if urbanization rates are accelerating, we will still have uh, a huge proportion of our population in rural areas by 2030. And that rural population will have a key dimension in the issues of policy making in all our different uh, uh, countries. So what does agricultural transformation mean in order to lead to industrialization. It means creating wealth related to agriculture but going beyond the agricultural sector. It means empowering small-scale farmers and it means also attracting the private sector in the agricultural transformation processes. Governments will not create the jobs in the rural sector the jobs will be created by the private sector. And the private sector is also composed of small-scale farmers. Let us not forget that small-scale farmers in Africa, which are contributing to producing 80% of the food we eat, are investing out of their own pockets $100 billion, according to FAO, in the development of agriculture in the continent. So by having an agricultural transformation based on empowering small-scale farmers, diversifying the sectors in the rural areas, and by attracting the private sector, we can lay the basis for job creation for the youth in rural areas. The second point is that the distinction between rural and urban areas territorially is being weakened and has to be relativized. What we see in most of the regions of the continent is the creation of medium-sized towns which are between urban and rural areas and which are giving a totally new definition of uh, space uh, 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 dimension. So the boundaries between rural and urban are becoming uh, 
are not evident as they were 30 years ago, which means that for policymakers, the necessity to take into account the spatial dimension in terms of planning is extremely important. So agricultural transformation will also need to take into account the rural and urban space uh, shifting uh, boundaries. My third point is that for all African governments, everything is a priority. Agriculture is a priority, health is a priority, education is a priority, energy is a priority. And in each one of these sectors, you have specific sectoral policies. The problem is the challenge of youth employment is by essence multi-sectoral. So if you do not connect the dots between the policies which are linked to education, to health, to energy, in order to boost youth employment, the creation of jobs will not happen because the conditions uh, set for that creation of jobs will not be created. So the role of the government is not to substitute itself to the private sector, but it is to connect the dots between all these sectoral policies so that you have a private sector which sees uh, an opportunity to invest in small and medium enterprises in order to create the jobs for the youth. The other point of, the, of this conference is the issue of climate uh, action and how climate change uh, can be transformed into an opportunity. Uh, let me explain this point. As you know, Africa will need to uh, do a double green revolution. A green revolution in its industrialization strategy and a green revolution in its urbanization processes. So we have the possibility of uh, picking solutions, innovative solutions that have worked so elsewhere in order to make sure that our industrialization does not have a cost in terms of climate uh, consequences. And the same needs to happen for urbanization. So by having a industrialization strategy that uh, will be sustained by a green approach, we will be able to create jobs for the youth that can limit the effects of, of climate change. Evidently, this looks theoretical, but what we see today is a, a radical change in terms of policy processes. And these radical changes are at two levels. The national level, where uh, governments are more and more aware of the necessity to connect the dots between the policies and not have them in an isolated, in isolated frameworks. And two, at local level. The local level through decentralized processes from east to southern to west Africa to central Africa, the local level is being more and more empowered. So uh, the change I'm referring to is that we will cease slowly to give privilege to a top-down process and give more importance to bottom-up processes. And these bottom-up processes where the local dimension will be empowered is extremely important because it can give the confidence to local communities on the way they manage their future. And as we all know, the issue of jobs is, is, has to be looked at in terms of massive numbers. In the next 30 years, it's uh, hundreds of millions of jobs that will need to be created. So this will not happen uh, by miracle.
It will have to happen through systematic policies, but most importantly, it will have to make sure that the youth is part of the solution. And part of the solution means that they will need to be part of the policy processes. If they are part of the policy processes, then we limit uh, the, the dimension of the time bomb and we reform our governance systems so that they, are more, they, are more, they have more confidence in themselves and they can see that the solutions that are being designed are constructed with them. Referring to uh, NEPAD now, as you know, we are being transformed internally uh, to become a development agency of the African Union. This is a challenge for us. It is a structural challenge and it is a functional challenge. It is a structural challenge because we'll have to reform the way we are intervening on the ground by redesigning our programs. But whatever redesign we do, uh, agriculture will still be a key and fundamental dimension of our activities. And agriculture seen in the multi-sectoral dimension I was referring to. That transformation of NEPAD is also a functional uh, challenge because we will need to demonstrate at the continental level that our actions have an impact on the ground. So that will mean a different way of interacting with governments, regional economic communities, and local communities. As you know, GIZ, uh, BMZ have been supporting uh, NEPAD in CADEP, in skills issues, and uh, these two dimensions are interrelated in the way we will organize uh, ourselves. So I wish uh, this conference to be uh, fruitful and uh, I hope that the few words I've said uh, can be used for a debate very humbly. Thank you.